Alright, well, welcome to Tube Time, episode 5! Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Anyway, the votes have passed and you asked for it, or the votes have passed and you asked for it, so going to make a power amplifier using one vacuum tube and I Oh god my camera's glitching out again. I'm charging the battery for my other camera, so uh, when that's done, I'll switch over to that. Today we are going to make a power amplifier using this one tube and obviously a couple of resistors and capacitors as well. Now you might remember in one of my previous videos I made an amplifier using a separate triode and pentode. Well, this thing has the triode and pentode built into the same package We have the triode over this bit here, which is this little bit here, and the pentode bit right there, on the other side. So a pentode on the left, triode on the right, just seeing if you can make out the actual little individual windings there of the screen. I mean, of the control grid, but of course it's not, I don't think it's going to focus at this length. So let's take a look at the parts we're going to use. Obviously there's the valve. We're going to need something to connect this to a speaker. So, output transformer. Going to need to be able to adjust the gain. So, potentiometer. And of course, various capacitors and resistors. I think my webcam is actually um, designed to behave on hearing that it's going to be replaced with another camera. So anyway, this is my design that I'm going to go with. And the tube I'm using is a 6 something, 5 something. No idea what those characters are because I don't speak a single letter of Russian. So that means I couldn't look up the tube to find out the pin layouts or anything like that. But thing is, the person who sent me the tube, and thanks once again, also included a data sheet of an ECL85, which I think is the same tube. So anyway, I'm going to build up this whole circuit here, test it, and probably have to tinker with it to get it to work properly. So anyway, I'm going to go and build this now, and I'll be back with it built, and we'll see how it works. We'll see how well it works. Okay, I've made it. Looks like a huge mess of wires at the moment. And it sort of works and it sort of doesn't. But mind you, I didn't expect it to work perfectly first time. And I'll give you a demonstration of how it sounds. I've got it hooked up to this speaker right here. And we're going to play something from the reel to reel. Well, I'm going to play something from the reel to reel. And play. <coughs> Well, it is a valve amplifier. Now, I recorded some stuff from Team Fortress 2. Okay. It's freaking loud. Volume control works. I'm going to stop that. Don't know if I'll get into any copyrights for that. It's hard to tell what you can play and what you cannot play on YouTube just lately. As you probably could hear, it's fairly distorted. But I think I know the problem. I'm also using my Jello Vision camera because I've just charged the battery for that so I can... So that's why the picture's not all going like this and stuff. Now, can you see the meter? Oh, I don't know. Something about cameras. They have an inability to see an LCD screen. Let's see, is that any better? Yeah, sort of better, you can see it. 
So anyway, I decided to probe the supply voltage which comes in here. And look what we have. We only have about 83 volts supply. This is the main filter capacitor. Let's see what voltage we got there. We only got 115 volts there. Then after the choke, there we've got this capacitor here. It's gone down to about 79 volts now. It's crazy. The filament supply still seems to be quite happy though. Well, actually, that's gone down a little bit as well. I was getting about 6.1 volts there. I'm only getting about 5.5 volts filament now. I'm surprised that this thing is actually working at the voltage it's getting. Because if you remember, that's being powered off the isolated AC. And we're already getting 94 volts. What is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. These transformers cannot handle it. I'm going to have to make a better power supply. I'm surprised that this thing is even functioning on a voltage that low. I did it whine a little bit while it was starting up and it's never done that before. I mean this thing is probably working overtime trying to get the voltage to what it should be. Right, well I've upgraded the power supply. I've put in that ancient transformer that's specifically suited to to power up valve circuits and now getting a lot more power. I've also replaced the choke with this much bigger one. Yes, I'm still using a transformer as a choke, but we get much more output voltage. We're now getting... About 308 volts across that capacitor. I don't know if you can see that. Again, camera's weakness for, about, for seeing meters. And across the final output capacitor, getting about 261 volts, so much more voltage. However, still got a few bugs to work out. Now, I've got some of Cave's messages from Portal 2 on here. Welcome to the Enrichment Center. <laughs> well, Cave, you sound Since terrible. Since test participation mandatory for all employees, the quality of our test subjects has risen dramatically. Yeah. Employee retention, however, has not. Yeah, it's still sounding pretty fuzzy. Okay, I'm just going to move this transformer because that's going to be... There we go. Not going to touch it because that transformer does get pretty hot. Not quite as hot as this thing gets, though. Doesn't red plate, though, which is a good sign. Or at least I don't see any signs of any red plating going on, so I think we're okay in that department. Of course, the camera cannot see anything at all now. Turn the lights out. I don't know why, but the, 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 the filament actually looks quite bright in real life, but on the camera it's very dim. I don't know why. First rule of finding out what's wrong with electronics, thou shalt test voltages. So this is our supply voltage coming in right here. To about two, almost 260 volts, that's absolutely fine. Alright, let's see what voltage is going to the screen grid. 169 volts, that doesn't seem to be too bad. Right, so let's see what voltage is on. The plate of the triode part. 45 volts. Alright, let's see what we got on the plate of the pentode. I'm trying to do this, putting myself in a weird position so my hands don't get in the way. I'm making sure I put my thing across the right wire here. Alright, so we got 139 volts. That would explain why this little transformer gets pretty dull. Why that transformer gets pretty warm. So everything seems to be okay. Right, well, let's test our bias voltages. And I can simply do this by measuring across the cathode resistor. So this is the cathode resistor of the pentode. Let's see what we got. 
Well, that's a little bit higher than I expected. We've got 28 volts there, so that resistor's going to get pretty toasty. Good thing I put a 35 volt rated capacitor there. All right, so we've got about 28 volts of bias on the pentode grid. Let's check the triode. Let's see what we got there. And, oh, less than a volt. Well, that might explain it. Should have about at least two or three volts there. Well, less than a volt. Should be higher than that. Okay, so that could be the problem right there. Could be a problem with the bias in the triode section. Okay. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to inject a signal directly into the pentode's grid and see how that sounds. Okay, so this is the line out from the reel to reel. I'm just going to put this directly onto the middle pin of this variable resistor, which is going to the which goes to the control grid of the pentode section. So. Strangely enough, I'm not hearing anything. It's weird. Should hear something. Let me just reduce the amount of resistance there. Okay, that's rather odd. I'm not hearing anything whatsoever. Or maybe it's not so odd, considering that I'd actually plug this into the line in instead of the line out. So, let's try again. And already my camera's batteries are running out. I only charged this yesterday. And I haven't filmed that much with it. The big light rule of the day I thought it could give Cave Johnson lemons. Do you know who I am? I'm the hmm. man who's going to burn your house down with the lemons. I'm going to get my engineers to invent a combustion. Okay, well, it sounds, definitely sounds distorted there, so I think we know where the distortion is coming from now. It's in the pentode section. My guess was it would have been in the triode section, considering that the bias is a little bit off. But no, it's in the bigger section of the tube, so I've got to find out what's causing that. And maybe we can bust this thing. But I was thinking that maybe we've got a bit too much current going through this thing, so... I've added another resistor and capacitor in line with the one that's connected to the cathode of the pentode side. So we've got about 940 ohms worth of resistance between the cathode and the ground. So I have now 40 volts at the cathode of the pentode section. And on the transformer. Got about 206 volts. So that transformer should run a little bit cooler now because it's not got so much voltage across it. And all that aside, playing the tape, it's the still cannon of the human race. Here I go. <laughs> and I am distorted. Continue testing. Pure intellect cave here. Not to brag, but while you were cat assing that last test, I rewrote the collected works of everything ever. If I gotta read this garbage for eternity, I might as well improve it. Yep, I talk garbage as well. Anyway, I'm not lit yet. I thought the first thing I would try is a different output transformer. And what do you know? Sounds about a hundred times better. No more distortion. And for some reason, the battery on my camera is just going up and down at random. Right. Okay, so this is the transformer that I was using before, which is still hot from its previous run. Now, this transformer, this one, has a primary of about a thousand ohms. Okay. However, I tried it with one of these doorbell or boombox or whatever you want to call it transformers. And this one has only about 400 ohms primary. Yet it works about 10 times better. 
I think this tube likes to be put under stress. This is the final design. As you can see, I've got everything all nice and soldered up now because before it was going <laughs> slightly in the background. Possibly because of tons and tons of loose connections. So anyway, we've got about 960 ohms worth of resistance there for the cathode resistor of the pentode part of the tube using a 470 ohm, I mean 470 microfarad capacitor for the pentode section's cathode resistor. I know it's getting a bit confusing here. I had to stop and think about that myself actually. I've also increased the cathode resistor for the triode part. I've increased that to 4.7 ohms, I mean 4.7 kilo ohms. So it should have a bit more bias. One of my peeps, one of my subscribers suggested I should build, should make a speaker out of one of these enclosures I have. So I have gone and done that. Put a speaker in, even added a base reflex port. We'll see how well that works. Oh, and for those of you who want a closer look up at the power supply and the modifications I've done to it, well, here it is. You might notice that this transformer is still in there. Now, that's all that's doing is the relay and nothing else. Because this transformer's primary is connected to the mains the way it normally would be. Well, it's connected up to the switch, but... So we have the output from this transformer instead of this transformer. And everything else is pretty much the same. It's on and powered up and I can still hear some static coming from the speaker. Even though I've soldered everything in. It's kind of unexpected. I don't know if you can hear that. You know, it's hard to find something that I won't get where I won't be had for copyright. Got this really old record on the turntable here. God only knows how old it is. It looks like a 78, but it's actually a vinyl 33. So, let's see how this turns out. Playing the second song in. Oh, wait, that one's a bit depressing. Let's go to this, the third one. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now let's go to the amplifier. Try to adjust the base reflex port. Till you come to me to stay, I'll worry watching every lonely day, slipping away. Come and hold me close, and then I'll never know that loneliness again, never again. So please, I need you near right me, there. darling. Won't you make it soon? And of course, you couldn't see what I was doing. I was doing this. To see if it sounded better with the bass reflex covered up or not. Where will you be near me, darling? Won't you make it soon? If you like and hear me, darling, won't you make it soon? Every star above me knows we shouldn't waste that room. Well, okay, I think. Alright. Let's just stop this now. There we go. Well, I'm going to say, apart from the unexplained static noise that I really have no idea where that's coming from, that's a pretty successful experiment. Now let's turn this off. Now this is kind of weird. 
Because when I turn this off, it makes a bit of a weird noise. There we go. Don't know what it is that causes that little squeak there, but yeah, whatever. Well, okay, so here is my final design. As you can see, it's almost identical to what you saw before, except of course there's those two resistors I changed that made this. This one here which is a now 4.7k and this one here which is 960 ohms which I made out of two 470 ohm resistors. And well, there is my single tube amplifier using a triode pentode combo. So anyway, we're just gonna let the thing speak for itself. Anyway, that's just about it for this video so just gonna wrap a few things up. Still got a little bit of that strange static. I have absolutely no idea what's causing that. I also decided to put a 1k resistor between the potentiometer and the grid of the pentode. Even though this circuit is my own design, I saw that in a few other circuits that use this, so I decided to do that myself to see if, well, just to see if it would make any difference, but it doesn't seem to. Anyway, the other strange thing is that the grid on the pentode side should be at zero volts but when I measure it as you can probably see we've got about 44 volts and that's should be at zero or uh, very close to zero so anyway I'm just gonna take some final voltage measurements so you can see for those of you who are curious so we can see what's actually going on so the supply voltage of my improved power supply is about 255 volts, more or less. On the suppressor grid, again, this is in the pentode section, we've got about 200 volts. Oh, 200 volts. The plate voltage seems to be a little bit high. We've got about 10 to 20 volts less than what the supply voltage is. So I may reduce the cathode resistor and so I can get more current flowing through the tube. So I get more current in the output transformer. But for the most part it's working so I might just well leave that as it is. Anyway, moving on to the cathode side, I mean the triode side. Well, the plate voltage is about 63 volts, so... That's pretty good. Anything between 50 and 150 is, as they say, in the ballpark. We got about 1.3 volts of the cathode. Still not quite as high as I'd want it to be, but increasing that resistor to 4.7 kilo ohms has definitely improved it. It works, so I'm not complaining. And the grid is right on zero volts, right where it should be. Or uh, almost zero volts, maybe. Just a couple of millivolts. Anyway, that's it for this video. And yes, you've been listening to me talking through this amplifier. Well, recording for me talking through this amplifier. But anyway, that's it for this video. And like I always say, until next time, goodbye.